Conrad Steiner, Doctor of Medicine. Tonight's story has the title, To the Great, a Most Seldom Gift. Guardian of birth, healer of the sick, comforter of the aged. And the qualities of the worthy physician are three. The eye of an eagle, the heart of a lion, the hand of a woman. This history tonight concerns the field of internal medicine. The object in point, a boy's sports shirt. The case in point, Milton George Corwin. He's 38 years old, unmarried. He has just purchased this shirt in quantity. 200 dozen of them, each shirt the same. A fact that will change his life. 20 years ago, he took a job with a downtown department store as a stock boy. Now Milton Corwin is a buyer with half a million dollars of the store's money to spend each year. With his meager start and his present position, you might say that Milton is a very unusual man. But in another way, a very important way, he is not unusual at all. For there are at least several million people in this country alone who suffer from the same misfortune which afflicts Milton Corwin. Good morning, Mr. Corwin. Everything look all right? Let's get those Tommy Tucker suits up out of the stock room. You're short in fours and sixes. Right. Anything else? Be sure that everyone on the floor has seen the ad. The advertising department has sent some proof sheets up. I'll see to it that everybody... Well, another thing, this reduced stuff, get rid of it today. I don't care if you have to mark it down to zero and take it home with you. We've got a hundred dozen small fry wash sets coming in. We need the space. I'll remark it and give you the list. Oh, and those socks. I trust you, Art. Just go ahead and do it. All right, give me half in two weeks, the other half in four. Otherwise, we'll have to cancel out. Elsa, I want you to hold all calls to room five until I give you the word, all right? Fine. Well, how are we doing this division? Make our figures this month? Well, I'm over in my total. All subs are up except uh, wash dresses, and they're not far behind. That's good. Mark those cottons down if they don't start the move. Al, well, you should have had a good month. We did. Suits are holding up fine, except the lightweights. We lost a little there, but we more than got it back on top coats. I'm up 15% over last year. That cold weather was a break. That's what we like to hear. Well, Bill, how about it? I'm down. Junior flannels are going all right. So are kids' furnishings. We lost it in the play sets and wash suits. What's wrong on that sub? Same cold weather that sold all the top coats. I want you to get that all back this month and some more to go with it. Now, we're looking for a 10% increase this month. We've upped our advertising allowance and we've got to get it all back. I want you to see Hensley this afternoon and give him a list of the items you want to push. I want to talk to you for a moment. Oh, look, it's no secret around here that we're looking for another merchandise manager. I know. Sheldon left last month, and I can't do his job and mine, too. Now, you're the senior buyer in this division. I'd like to see you get the job. But I can't push your appointment if you're not making your figures. I can't sell play suits during a storm order. Then sell raincoats, man. We'd order for good weather. The merchandise was already down in the... Now, look, I'm not going to argue every item with you, Milton. I'm simply telling you this. If you expect to hold an executive position, you've got to learn to see the overall picture. I hope you're big enough for the job. Working late again, Milt? For a while. Well, you can have my share of it. When five o'clock comes, I'm on my way. If I bought only men's suits and top coats, I could leave every day at noon. Old Waller gave you the big pep talk this morning, didn't he? Oh, don't worry, I know the spiel. Big job open, lots of responsibility. Appointment soon, must make those figures. You're very talented. Right, and I'll tell you something else, Milt. It's gonna take a lot more than just making the figures to get that job, something special. Good night, Milton. Good night, Vader. Friday night, you know. Have a nice weekend. You might offer to take me to dinner. That would help. You know I'd like to. I just haven't got the time. Look at all this. Look. You used to find time. I had an easier job then. 
Now you're asking for harder one yet. Is it that important to you, Milton? Yes, it is, Veda. I'll have it your own way. I'll ask Betty to bring a pot of coffee and a sandwich up to you. Thanks. Good night. Good night. What for? I've kept you here late several nights now lately. No, Mr. Corwin, you don't have to do that. You buy something for your little girl with it, huh? Good night, Carl. Good night, sir. Same stomach cramps, Mr. Corwin? Worse, all this week. Let me phone the doctor now. It'll be all right, it's just the same old trouble. I'm telling you, Mr. Corwin, you've got to see a doctor. My brother had the same thing like you got. That's so? How's he feeling now? He ain't feeling nothing. He's dead. And you say the pain is much more severe recently. Are you under any strain right now? I suppose you might say so. I'm in line for a good promotion. Do you smoke a great deal? A couple of packs a day, I guess. Would you say that you had a satisfactory social life? No, not especially. I'm entertained a certain amount by manufacturers and wholesalers, but that's hardly entertainment. As an offhand observation, Mr. Corwin, it seems your job is very important to you. It certainly is. I came up the hard way, Doctor. My dad died when I was still a kid. I had to quit school and go to work. My job has been my whole life. Now I've got the biggest chance I've ever had. I don't know if you can understand that. I think I do. A lot of doctors came up the hard way. You have the classic symptoms of a peptic ulcer, Mr. Corwin. I'm referring you to a gastroenterologist uh, for more extensive examination. Uh, Dr. Sellers is his name. I recommend you uh, see him just as soon as you possibly can. The gastroenterologist? Yes, he's a specialist in the problems of the digestive system. <laughs> An ulcer isn't all psychological, as some people think. It involves a great deal more than that. Uh, you see, your stomach produces a substance called pepsin for digestion. Uh, it also secretes hydrochloric acid to activate this pepsin, uh, make it do its work. Now, if the stomach secretes too much acid, it causes the pepsin to become overactive. In fact, sometimes it becomes so overactive, it eats out the lining of the stomach, or more likely, the more delicate lining just below the stomach in the duodenum, uh, and thus an ulcer is formed. As yet, we can't name any one specific cause for this condition. Your physiologic makeup your sex, your age, your heredity, uh, they're all involved. You mean that nervousness has nothing to do with it, then? No, I didn't mean that at all. Your emotions have a great deal to do with it, Mr. Corwin. A mind kept under stress keeps sending impulses and stimuli at too great a frequency down the vagus nerves, uh, causing the stomach to pour out hydrochloric acid uh, much more than it needs. Well. Suppose I do have an ulcer, Dr. Marshman. What will it mean? Well, it'll probably mean you'll have to go on to a special diet, to ease things up generally, uh, do everything you can to eliminate mental stress and tension uh, as much as possible. That's impossible, Doctor. That's part of my job. I can't ease up. Well, your condition's going to get worse. It has to, it has to. I'll just have to nurse the thing along. Anyway, a lot of people have ulcers, are still living. That's right, Mr. Corwin. But a lot of them aren't. For his visit to Dr. Marshman, the patient presented himself at the offices of William Sellers, M.D., a gastroenterologist, where he underwent a series of special examinations. When slight pressure was exerted, the patient displayed a tenderness just below the breastbone. Sample fluid taken from the patient's stomach tested 63 free acidity and 80 total acidity, a high acidity measurement. 
Fluoroscopic examinations and x-ray films definitely established the presence of a large penetrating ulcer in the posterior wall of the duodenum. Urine and blood tests showed no other physiologic disturbance. For peptic ulcer, there is no routine treatment. A course of ulcer management must be suited to the particular needs of each patient. Oh, remember, no sweets, no spices or highly seasoned foods. And above all, no tobacco, no alcohol, no coffee. What about tea? Milk. Returning to his job, the patient unfortunately felt it necessary to keep the news of his ulcer a secret so as not to jeopardize his chances for promotion. Because of this need for secrecy, he found it more and more difficult to observe his doctor's instructions. You couldn't go out to lunch, so I brought you something. Oh, thanks. Well, that's nice of you. What have we got? Good hot coffee and a jelly donut. It's delicious. Now, go ahead and eat it. Morning, Art. How are things in the department? Oh, fine, Mr. Corwin. Just fine. Oh, I have a cigar. Oh, thanks. I don't smoke, Art. Oh, you'll have to smoke this one, Mr. Corwin. It's a boy. Six pounds, ten ounces. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. What do you say we dropped on to Sam's for some of his special pizza? You know, with the, the peppers and the garlic sauce? I haven't had one of those in a blue moon. But in spite of the many trials and temptations to which he was subjected, Milton Corwin kept his secret and kept his diet. He experienced a slight remission of symptoms, but the continual strain he was under prevented any thorough healing of his ulcer. The vital promotion still hung in the balance. You bought this shirt, Milton? Yes, I bought it. Just how many did you buy, if you don't mind telling me? Two hundred dozen. Two hundred dozen. You fool! I got a very good price on those shirts, Walter. A good price? You should get a good price. This is a sound item. Good grade of combed cotton. This shirt is dead, right? Milton. The collar style is dead. The color is dead. The whole shirt is dead. You know why you got a good price, Milton? That's distressed merchandise. This shirt was offered on a market three years ago. It's been stuck in a warehouse ever since. Every other boy's buyer in town turned down the shirt three years ago. I wasn't buying the boys' department three years and ago. And you shouldn't be now. Haven't you seen a kid lady? Men don't you know what they wear? They wear Italian-style collars, bright colors, crazy pastels. No self-respecting kid will be caught dead in a shirt. Two hundred dozen. Something important today, Art. A hot item we've got to push. Something really good. Now, this is a good shirt. We've got a good price on it. The collar may not be the very late. You fool! You fool! You fool! It takes more than just making the figures to get that job. Something special. It takes more than just making the figures to get that job. Something special. It's Friday night. It's Friday night. It's Friday night. Special. It's Friday night. Special. Something special. Something special.
patient was found unconscious in a pool of blood beside the telephone and was immediately taken to the hospital. Dr. Sellers immediately called a qualified surgeon to work with him in determining whether medical or surgical treatment would be indicated. In spite of four transfusions, the patient's hemoglobin had dropped to 40%, and it became apparent that the ulcer was hemorrhaging to the extent that he was losing blood faster than it could be replaced. In a case such as this, the surgical procedure usually indicated is known as a subtotal gastrectomy. The abdomen is opened, and about two-thirds of the stomach, together with a part of the duodenum just beyond it, is removed. portion of the stomach is sutured to a new opening in the small intestine. The purpose of removing such a large portion of the stomach is to help prevent the formation of a new ulcer. By reducing the total acid secretion in this manner, the surgeon enables the patient to maintain better control of his gastric acidity. Through prompt diagnosis, through skilled surgery, the harm which Milton Corwin has done himself is remedied, and a man who might easily have lost his life has lost only part of his stomach. For three to five days following the operation, the gastric tube is retained to keep the stomach empty while the suture line heals. The patient is given intravenous fluids and, if necessary, further blood transfusions. Then gradually, the patient is allowed to take liquids and bland, non-irritating foods. When a patient has had a portion of his stomach removed, the stomach must be nursed along with small feedings until it adapts itself. Eventually, the stomach becomes a little larger and the person can eat a relatively normal meal. There are thousands of people who have had one half to two thirds of their stomach removed and who still lead a normal existence. The basic problem, however, is that the conditions which prevailed before the operation and which led to the production of the ulcer are still there. Nice for you to drop by, Doc. Thanks a lot. Not at all. Doctor never lose interest in his patient just because he recommended to a specialist. So you're getting out tomorrow. I suppose you have your new diet all memorized? Uh, yeah, it's a pretty dull one. Don't let that disturb you. As you get better, the diet will get better. Oh, by the way, I almost forgot. Here's a letter for you. It was at the desk as I came by. Thanks. Something wrong? Go ahead, read it. See for yourself. The board of directors is pleased to announce the appointment of Mr. Al Monroe, formerly buyer of men's suits and top coats, to the position of merchandise manager of Division Three. That's the job that I should have had. For Twenty years I've been aiming at it. What do I get? An ulcer and a lousy form letter. Did you uh, read the postscript here? Dear Milt, we're all waiting and hoping for your quick recovery. Whenever you're ready, we'll be glad to have you back at the store. It's signed, Walter Bromberg. Yeah. I bet he'll be glad to see me back. You had quite a few people from the store come out to see you. You refused to see any one of them. Will you tell me why? I was sick. I didn't feel like seeing anyone. It's a lie, isn't it? You know why I didn't want to see anyone. Ashamed of myself. Mr. Corwin, a null, sir, is nothing to be ashamed of. It is to me. It's not just the ulcer. It's what it stands for. It... It's just one more sign. It proves what I've been fighting all my life. I'm strictly second-rate, Doctor. 
I'm not executive material. I never will be. I'm a buyer. Just an everyday, good, competent buyer. Is that so bad? All my life, I wanted to be a great success. The time I was a stock boy, I worked and studied. Not just worked at the business, but myself. I made myself tough. I knew I wasn't well liked. I didn't care. I put on a cast iron front to keep myself that way. Somehow, when it cracked, we're out. Twenty years. Twenty long years. Now what? Mr. Corwin. Maybe now is the time for you to learn that there are some things much more important than success. Like what, for instance? I'm afraid that's something you'll have to find out for yourself. Golly, we sure missed you around here. Good to see you again. Thank you, Walt. Nice having you home, Mel. Thank you. All right. Well, what are you doing up here? I couldn't miss your homecoming, boy. How do you feel? All right, fine. I have to make such a production out of it. It's all this. Well, it's nothing much. The people on the floor wanted to give you a little something. Everybody chipped in. Very nice. Thank them for me when you go back down. Oh, Art's not on the floor anymore, Milton. We've got a new department manager. Oh? Art's your new assistant. Be working here at Al's old desk. What's the matter, Walter? Are you afraid I can't carry the load anymore? Oh, of course not. You know, while you were gone, I realized that two men couldn't do the work you were doing. You had too many separate items, too much detail work in that department. No other buyer in the store carried a load like that. I don't know why you didn't scream about it a long time ago. I built the volume in that department. It was up to me to carry it. Now look, Milt, you don't have to give us that tough businessman routine. It was a great act, boy. Why, well, you were the man of iron, a business machine. You fooled everybody. Did I? You should have heard everybody when the news came out that you had an ulcer. They couldn't believe it. I mean, the idea that you were as human as the next man. It floored him. You know, you have a pretty tough reputation around here. Ah. That's all history now, Milt. It's all over. You remember the gang now, a full-fledged member. Let's go, boys, at my office, and we'll, um, we'll discuss last month's figures. Now, Milton, I, um, I want you to come on in when you're ready. We'll talk over that split in the buying, huh? Al. Yes. Congratulations on the promotion. Well, thanks, Milt. Thank you. What are you going to do, work all night? I must have caught it from you. <laughs> Not lately you didn't. How about dinner? I think that would be very nice, Mr. Corwin. And do you think we have time? I think we could always find the time. <laughs> 